Hello everyone, welcome back to the fairy tale Vase Scorned, where we're going to continue this confrontation that she's having with her son, it seems. My harsh words and volatile temper lessened my own pain, but only a little, as long as I followed my curse's direction. It would not hurt me so severely. Karen's response further soothed my cursed magic, but then he said something that sent me reeling. A memory I had tried so hard to erase from my mind, tearing free from the place I had hidden it away. No matter what I choose to do, I choose, he growls softly. You'll never be satisfied. You'll never stop taking your anger with my father out on me. I had turned away from him briefly to catch my breath and give my own glamour a chance to subdue the other unwelcome power. But upon hearing those words, the darkness rose again like a battle hungry dragon. Your father, I growled out, took advantage of my good graces. Caden, my only son, and the near spitting image of his sire, laughed out loud. Ha, <laughs> your good graces, he tricked you, plain and simple, and you tried to beguile him. So really, you only have yourself to blame. Before I, before I could form a retort, the Phaedon magic swirling beside my own glamour pulsed, seeking m my pain and making it worse. It flushed in like flood water, creating a river, and carried me away from that rain-swept field. I blinked once more. And I tried to keep myself together, but found myself standing in one of my memories, the one I had tried and failed to remove from my mind. Bitter regret and scorn curled in my stomach, and I clenched my teeth, raging at the cursed magic that tormented me would do me no good. But I could not live through this memory again. Turning in a near panic, I tried to find a place to flee. Perhaps I could outrun what was to happen next. Fear spiked in my heart when I noticed the dark mouth of a cave, gaping beneath the hillside covered in ancient oak trees, just right ahead of me. Mist clogged the sky above, and... The limpid light suggested the time to be early evening. I can still escape this. I can. I breathed in myself. I simply turned away from the cave. But it was too late. Like the sun breaking through the clouds, a flame leapt up in the heart of the cavern, and a man stepped out. Tall, broad shoulders... He wore his dark red hair long. His chest was bare, as were his feet. The only clothing he wore was an old kilt that hung loosely around his waist. He looked good. He looked better than good. I knew right away he was more than just a fellow wren. This man had to wather the blood in his veins. But whose, I could not tell. I sneered at him ready to assert my authority as one of the goddesses of ill. But then he smiled, his glamour pouring forth from him, like the heady scent of honeysuckle blossoms on a warm summer morning. I had known to seduce those. Yes, those men I found attractive, and I knew the feelings they invoked in me, emotions of darkness consumed before I could recognise them. This was different. I thought to spend this evening alone, the man said, his voice rich and deep. 
but here I stand, blessed by the spirits of ale, with such beautiful company. I had a snide remark ready for this stranger, who thought to charm me, but when I opened my mouth to speak, only a sigh passed through my lips. He moved in closer, his footfalls against the mossy forest wall, with remarkable grace from such a tall man. He reached out an arm and extended it towards me. I sucked in a breath and took a quick step back. He arched an auburn brow. His grin, well, changeable grin, his eyes shimmering like the rippling surface of some warmed pond. There now, he murmured, not moving any closer. I will not hurt you. That statement made me scoff. Do you know who I am? The man smiled again, sending heat through my veins. I waited for my fade magic to turn that pleasant feeling into pain or disdain, but it did not. I eyed the stranger again, my brow furrowed. What power did he yield that he could not make my curse remain dormant? You are the Morrigan, he said, his voice holding some reverence, and I am no stranger to you either, I believe. I crossed my arms and gave him a pointed look. I'm afraid we have not met. I am Cuchulain. Ah, yes. I had heard of him. The young, young hot-headed half to upper the son of Lou. He had been roaming about Isle and the mortal world for the past several years, taking on challenges and helping win wars between the mortals. He was skilled in glamour, and he was said to possess the rare gift of Restrad, an ability to transform into a more violent and powerful version of himself in a battle. But he was no warped monstrosity at that moment. He was a pristine specimen of a man, even more attractive than most Philoran men I had come upon, and they were a race blessed with beauty and strength. Even as I admired the portrait he painted, I waited for my darkness to punish me, as it always did. When I found myself enjoying any aspects of life, the waves of retaliation, they never came. And as the Morrigan, I finally said, returning to our conversation, I am very busy. I had a battle to oversee the next morning. One, actually, that would help me reclaim a very desirable portion of my realm, and one which would earn me some coveted and needed glamour. My curse was always hungry for more, and if I did not feed it, I was punished. Whatever this fair Lorraine man was doing it to me to keep that punishment at bay could only mean worse for me when I got away from him. Turning, I meant to leave him behind and forget about this strange encounter. Wait, he said. A heavy hand came to rest on my shoulder. In any other situation, I would have definitely snarled jerk free, cursing any lout who dared touch me with him without my consent. I was a goddess of war and strife. I was the one who seduced others to follow my whim, not the other way round. But the moment his fingers brushed against the sensitive skin on my neck, something happened. A warmth radiated from his fingertips and palm, pulsing through me like a heady drug. I turned back around, my eyes surely melting to the warm shade of ruby. He looked different now, this renegade hero of the other world. A strange but not unpleasant feeling wrapped around my heart, and the darkness that never let me be remained silent, dormant, as if it wasn't even there. Before I could protest, his other hand reached out, caressing my face. More of that tingling heat poured forth and I gasped. Cuchulain took advantage of my moment of distraction and bent his head, captivating my mouth in a bold but sensual kiss. I kissed him before, 
Men are meant to use and manipulate. Always I control the situation. This was different. Now I was the one being manipulated and the one being seduced. My mind knew this and fought against the torrent of unfamiliar and tantalising sensations coursing through my blood, but it could not tear away from him. Giving up the fight and in all honesty, relishing in the fact that my cursed for the magic was doing nothing to bring an end to this strange joy, I gave in. Without breaking our kiss, Kerchulin swept me off my feet and carried me back to the cave. The awaiting battle be damned. My horrible gets and needs be damned. For once, I knew what it was to be the one desired, the one indulged, and for once in my long, long life, that darkness which controlled everything about me, that poisonous magic I both loved and craved, that unshakable power which brought me pain every chance it got, was held at bay. For once, I could just feel, breathe, live without the accompaniment Penimunt of punishment. That evening in a small cave, tucked into the hills along the edge of my realm, I succumbed to a happiness so many before, before me had exper experienced. For the very first time in my existence, what might have been the first smouldering embers of love kindled my very heart. And that's the end of part to guys thank you so much for tuning in to listen i'm looking forward to part three see where it takes us interesting that love's on the horizon many blessings